Hey, it's Bjorn from Adobe Learning Lab. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you where to edit CSS on your WordPress site. I can't show you how to edit it or how to write CSS code because that's the topic of a full course. You can't just quickly learn CSS over the course of a short video. There's a lot to it, but I can show you where to find it on your WordPress site or where to add it. And depending which theme you're running, there are four different places. One is in the editor under the appearance menu. One is in the theme options panel. One is on pages themselves that you create. And the last one is inline CSS right inside the content. Now I recommend to never do inline CSS if you can avoid it and to always keep your CSS in the main style sheet rather than putting into the theme options and or the page itself. Because if you keep it all in the, in the style sheet, it's all in one spot. You never have to go hunting around six months later trying to figure out why these CSS styles are being applied and you don't know where they are. So um, keep it in the style sheet is my best recommendation. And so let's do the, the first one. So under appearance, if we go to editor, what usually opens immediately is the style sheet, style.css. If that doesn't load, just press command or control F and search for style.css. And you will see it on the list on the right hand side. In this case, for the beta theme, you also see animations.css, ilightbox.css, and shortcodes.css. So you have your main style sheet where all your styles should go, but if you have subsets like animations, it can be smart to separate that into its own file. But for most cases, if you're just editing the CSS on your site, keep it in the CSS or the style.css sheet. And um, I'm just gonna show you the animation style sheet. I'm just gonna click on that to open it. So if you have CSS in here that you want to edit, what I recommend you do is not delete it. I wouldn't say, oh, I wanna change this keyframe, so I'm just gonna delete that. I would not do that. I would just go in here and use comments. So if you wanna change the opacity to something else, you comment it out by doing a forward slash star, which is shift eight, and then star forward slash. So this is no longer applied. And then you can put in your own version of it. I recommend you do it this way because there is no undo command when you're working in the editor. Once you click update file, there's no going back to what was there before, unless you refer back to the original style sheet in the, in the theme files, which can be a bit of a pain. So I, I definitely recommend that you comment out the style you're changing and then put in your own. So you have a copy of the original or you just type in your own styles which you don't have to uh, comment those out at all because then they won't work. But or you can just make your own styles. Just go to class, paragraph, and then put in your style here. And that, that's it for editing the editor style sheet. Um, if you do this via FTP, what you can do is download the file. I'm just gonna show you really quick. Here I'm in the FTP for this site. If I go to WP content, themes, Aveda, and I open animations.css. It's gonna open them with my Sublime Text 2 syntax highlighting editor. The benefit to using FTP and a file editor like this is now you can undo. So if we delete this, uh, no, if we delete like this whole thing, click on save, the file uploads, and then you go to your site and holy smokes, everything's broken. You can just press Control or Command Z or go to uh, the edit menu. I think it's the edit. Yeah, and you, just, you can just undo everything you did. And then you're back to the original sheet and you save that, it uploads that new version, or in this case, the, the undone version back to the original. So you can undo if you're editing through FTP. You cannot undo through the editor on the WordPress site, you cannot undo in the file manager in the cPanel. You can't undo anywhere else besides through FTP. So if you look at another way, we can add CSS. If you go to the theme options panel, not every theme has these, but if your theme does have a theme options, it probably has a custom CSS section. This is the whole theme options here at the bottom. There's a custom CSS menu item. And you just type in your styles right here. And that is then applied to your site. Uh, the benefit of doing this is you're not changing the original style sheet. 
The drawback of doing this is now you have your styles in two separate places. So it makes it harder for you to remember six months down the road where which styles are. It's better to have it all centralized into one style sheet. That said, there's another place you can add styles. A lot of the newer themes, if you are editing a page, the page editor itself has a styles section where you can add custom styles that apply just to that page. For the Aveda theme, they use something called the Fusion Builder. And inside the Fusion Builder, there's this little code symbol. Hover over it, it says custom CSS. You click on there, you can add your custom CSS right here. And this is then applied to only this page. And the benefit to that is it's applied to only that page, which is great because if you put it into, uh, into the custom CSS section, even the main style sheet, those styles are always loaded every time the page loads, which can be very resource intensive. So if you have it just on this one page, if you have like thousands of rules, CSS rules for this one page, they only load for this one page. So it can save on server resources. The drawback, just as before, your styles are decentralized. So it might be harder to keep straight in your mind where which styles are. You have to decide which method works best for you. And inside the text itself is the last place, or the, the elements themselves is the last place to edit the code. So if we are in the HTML section or the text tab, we have a paragraph tag, we can add a style directly to the paragraph tag. And we don't need to have a selector because we're applying it right to the tag. And then this font size is applied directly to this paragraph. This is called inline CSS. The drawback is, again, decentralized. And the second drawback is if you now have a style in the main style sheet, that tries to overwrite this, it won't work because this is inline, this takes priority. You can use something called the important variable, which you add to the CSS rule by having exclamation important at the end. So it'd be like this, which tells that rule to override any other rule. And this can often get around inline CSS getting in the way, but it's better to just not have inline CSS get in the way in the first place. It's better to have it all centralized in your main style sheet. Use an FTP program to edit it if you're making lots of changes and you wanna have the ability to undo changes. Use an FTP program. If you're comfortable with CSS, you can do it directly in the editor, or you can do it in the page, in the theme options, or in line, whatever best suits you, but I recommend you keep it in the main style sheet. I hope this video helps you. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Please make sure you like this video, share on social media, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and check out wplearnlab.com where we publish more tech tutorials just like this every single day. Talk to you soon.